this earthly session that we're in. This is a temporary state, but the word that is in us is an eternal place of being. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And in the man Jesus, the God man, time and eternity married together. He brought heaven to earth. He brought the divine into the humanity. And now we stand as his very vessels of truth in this hour. We're chosen, elected, ordained seed of God that cannot fail. There is not one thing that has happened in any of your lives tonight that is big enough to cause the plan of God's purpose to fail. You have been reconciled to a purpose. And whether you're even aware of it tonight or not, the Holy Ghost is able to quicken everything in your being and make your whole spirit jump with new life. There's a seed of God in every one of you. And by the anointing tonight, we're prophesying ahead of time that the seed in every one of you is going to be watered and fertilized and brought to light of the gospel and the glory of the Lord tonight. Not the gospel of some man or some creed or some custom, but the very kingdom of God that is in this earth that is able to quicken the dead and call it the things that be not as though it were. Hallelujah. All oh, praise the Lord. You need to get in your head tonight that no picture you're looking at can be determined by how you see it as this very moment. There are so many things going on in the supernatural realm right now. And God is working for your good in your behalf. And whether you feel it or think it or can see it or can even say it tonight, there's enough of the faith of God, hallelujah, in this room to declare that the Word of God shall come to pass and that everything God has spoken over you will not fall idly by to the wayside, but it will produce we're not hunting 30. We're not even hunting 60 tonight. We're hunting a hundredfold return in this meeting. Can you raise your hand one more time and praise Him in this place? Hallelujah. Thou art worthy.
raise your hands tonight and give him the glory. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you. You may be seated in his presence tonight. How many are aware of his presence tonight? How many know good and well that he can do on the inside what he's doing on the outside? And there can be an absolute storm of heaven's goodness in this house. I believe in spirit tsunamis. I believe the Lord is able to send a tidal wave of His presence and glory in your midst tonight. We're so thankful for all of you that are in this house. We bless you and honor you for braving this weather and for coming out in this storm. And hallelujah, that's Florida in the summer. Every, every time you want to have church or revival, there's going to be a storm in the summer. Amen. I remember one night I was thinking just as I was driving my wife and, and kids across the street tonight about uh, one time Brother Keck had his tent up in Auburndale and boy was he having a meeting <laughs> and the weather had cooperated beautifully and uh, he called and asked if I would come minister on a Thursday night and everything was so beautiful till 30 minutes before time to get on the road and head over there and it did just like it's doing right now and i don't mean little rain i mean big chief rain and uh, i told some of them coming in we always said that was toad strangling rain and so i thought what to what to do with the we're in a tent and the, i know you're covered but that don't matter it runs down the pole yeah. up top and it runs under and the flaps and the wind blows it under and by the time we got there, I don't even think everybody went with me. I think maybe just Dad went. Nobody wanted to brave the weather. And we got in, and sure enough, it was rivers of living water, brother. It was running everywhere. But I got up, and I said, Lord, just I'll just have to believe that even if it's five or six, you've sent me here to give a word to whoever's going to be here. And I want you to know when they got through coming in, there was probably 35, 40 people came in in the middle of that storm. And there was a whole row of little old sisters that come. I don't know how they got in there, but they did. And they were, on, they were ready to have church. And we did. And the anointing was so wonderful and so strong. And so we were going to pray for the people and, and bless them before they left. And I want you to know they forgot all about that rain. And I, they, they got blessed. Some of them fell right down in the spirit, in the mud. Amen. It was a glorious time. We had a good meeting and it didn't wash us away. But I'll tell you right now, folks, I do believe in a restoration that is taking place in this hour. And I don't believe it's latter rain or former rain. I believe it's both of them. In the first month. I don't believe the Lord's going to let anybody categorize it or put a label on it. I believe it's just going to be all of it happening at one time. Can you say amen? One of the things we know we've seen a lot of revivals during the years come through this area. And it always gets messed up because man tries to label it or stamp it as this church or that church or this group or that group. How many of you know what God will do in this hour? It won't be according to groups and systems and measures and and clicks and cliches or none of that. It'll be an absolute direct manifestation of that Christ which is in all of you who is the hope of glory. Every person in here tonight is being made subject unto hope. And that hope maketh not a shame. Can you say praise the Lord? And I'm thankful for all of you being here tonight. Thankful for Sister Betty being able to be in the house of the Lord. Thankful for all the folks from Sunshine. Amen. Bob and Marie and Sister Diane, all of you, bless you for coming out tonight. And we're so happy that Brother uh, Mike and Sister Gail and then their son Sky is here. And we've not met him yet. We just met him before service. We're happy to have him in the meeting tonight. And we're glad to have the Cargills yes. with us tonight. Brother Mike Cargill is back there. And, and that is your sister. And this, what is your name? I didn't get your name. Carissa. Carissa, bless you. Brother Mike, standing grief, brother. We haven't seen you in a while. Long time. Amen. It's glad to be back here. Uh, friends, family, and people of God. I just thank God that uh, what he's doing in this last day and hour 
and I want to encourage everyone that you know uh, all the seed that God gives you is good seed. Amen. And uh, sometimes the seed has to fall on the ground and die. Amen. And also it's got to be on the good ground. Amen. And I, I really believe on the way here uh, that the Lord is speaking to me to encourage y'all that some of the seed that you may have sown may have not been on the right ground or may have looked like it's died. But all right. Amen. It's rising things back. Hallelujah. And things again are restored and reconciled. And he's going to get the Lord. Now. Thank God. And yes. Praise him. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many believe in resurrection life? Amen. There is hope of a tree if it be cut down. And even if its roots wax old in the earth, yet through the what? Sin of water. What will it do? Bring forth. Start budding again. I tell people all the time, don't count that dream gone if you think it got cut off. And how many of all of us have seen our dream get cut down? And it looked like it just wasn't going to be. But you just let a, uh, you just let the word come, whether it's through a prophecy or, or through an anointed message or through worship, and let the first scent of water hit that. And you know what you'll do? You'll start dreaming again. <laughs> Amen. You'll start seeing hope again. Praise the Lord. Sister Betty, you want to say anything to us? I just praise the Lord. Amen. For your help. Amen. 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 Brother Bob, you want to say something to us tonight? right here. There ain't no 
There ain't no enemy in the heaven where he sits that can say a word, brother. That is over with. That is a done deal. Can you say amen? If there's any war going on, it is in these heavens, what we perceive, what we believe, what we think about something. And that's what's costing the victory on this side. Is how we're perceiving it. How we're seeing it. Can you say amen? Brother Frank, bless his heart. He's drove that long trip. <laughs> Cecilia, bless you. Good to see both of you. Give us something good. Brother Frank, speak to us tonight. Hallelujah. Well, you know, when you think about it, the Bible says that we have a treasure in earthen vessels. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, for years I've been, all day long I talk to my customers and I tell people I'm prophesying to them, I'm giving them a word of knowledge, I'm working the discerning spirits, I got all the gifts flowing, they have no idea what's hitting them. <laughs> but listen, folks, we've got within us. <coughs> Just like Obedeum. Yes. Where, where David let the tent abide, where David allowed the tent, the Ark of the Covenant yes. to, to stay in his home. Amen. We have got the Ark. Yes. We've got the very presence yes. of the Lord Amen. that's in yes. us and abiding in us. Hallelujah. And wherever we go and whoever we touch and whoever comes into our Acquaintance, it's our responsibility. Amen. It's our job to share Hallelujah. that anointing Amen. and that power. And we've experienced it, Cecilia and I. We've we've had. She has all kinds of friends that needs a lot of prayer, and I need a lot of prayers. We all need prayer, but I tell you what, we've been seeing some things answered. Thank God. Just praying. How about that? Well, Thank you know, God. You yes. pray and something happens. Yes. Yes. It, you know, it's such a concept with God. If you if you touch Him and you enter into His gates with thanksgiving and Thank into His courts with praise, you're in His presence. Hallelujah. And if you'll take the advantage, if you'll take the opportunity to share and just pray for people that that you may not even know that well. Right. To see God move yes. in a remarkable way. And that's what I think the Lord is bringing about in this hour. He's causing us to go out there in the byways and the highways and it compel them to come in. Sure. And that coming in may not just be here, that's but right. it's into Him. Hey, into hey, His man. very presence. And if you'll do that, you'll see a blessing. You'll see things get changed because God honors that. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Thank God. That's what a lot of people, you know, think. If you if you walk in the kingdom, anything spiritually manifested just ceases. No, it does not. It intensifies and it gets greater. I know kingdom people don't want no gifts operating. Don't want no land on their hands. Don't want that brother. Listen. We got it all. There ain't no, there ain't, that's what the beauty of how the kingdom of God operates. It's all of it. Together. Amen. And some folks, bless their hearts, they say, we'd go over there to that church, but that brother Matt and them shouts and runs and prophesies. Well, we don't have no plans to change it either unless the Lord uh, changes it. Amen. Just because you get knowledge don't mean you dry up. It means you grow up. You grow up into Him. You may not never run a step your whole born again days, but don't you say a word if I run 10,000. Amen. Because I know in whom I have believed and I am persuaded tonight. Praise God. Once again, bless all of you for coming in tonight. And how happy we are to have the ministry of Brother Mike and Sister Gail and being as happy as that, we want to bless the work of God tonight with our giving in the realm of finances. We're going to ask everybody to prepare an offering to bless the man and woman of God tonight and we ask you to bring that now and give it as unto the Lord in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. <laughs>
got? Brother Mike Cargill, do any of your folks back there sing? Uh, my sister. Come on and bless us with a song tonight. <laughs> Brother Mike, you come on with her if you want to play or anything. Bless your heart. Hallelujah. I want you to hide out. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God for every heart. Amen. Amen. I felt the Holy Spirit as soon as I entered the building. And I know the Holy Spirit's always been important in my life. Amen. I can't yes. make it without it. Yes. And you know what? Cling to the Holy Spirit. We are in the last days. And when I look around and I see what's going on in our world, I know that Jesus is in control. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I haven't sang in a while, <laughs> but I just pray it will bless you. Amen. Amen. Do, do you know the blood? Oh, yes, I can sing it in C or G. Okay. Oh, the blood the Jesus shed for me.
to receive that which dwelleth right between the cherubims in the midst of the glory, the Shekinah of God. Praise the Lord. All right, we, we won't hold any longer. We'll turn the ministry of God loose tonight. And uh, whichever of you's come first, probably Sister Gail, you come in first, Sister Gail. Amen. Would you please worship Jesus as they come to give us the word of the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. some kind of evil report or uh, you've been diagnosed with the disease they say you're going to die from, we'll get it off of you tonight. And can you play that Leslie speaker and organ again to get that revival sound going? Because I felt it when you were singing, but the Lord told me a couple nights ago this was going to happen here and I was going to try to sidestep it. Give me a minute here. I'm just gonna move over to another. I'm gonna move over to another dimension. God, what he tells me to do. Mike, can you come help me? We don't have to walk around sick. You don't have to walk around hurting. God gave us gifts, amen, in the church. Oh, glory to his name. You may think I'm crazy, but I'm going to throw my coat on you tonight because there's anointing on this coat. I preach all over the United States with this coat and I'm throwing it on people and it's been healed. Amen. If you need it, it's, got, it's here if you need it. In the name of
is real, folks. This is the real deal here, amen. I'm all going to shut my contact. Who's, who's next in line? Uh, Andy. girl sang a song there's a miracle in the making and I said and God's got a miracle for you tonight born without a hip socket and I didn't know they were going to put one in two days later but they didn't need to put one in because God put one in they took an x-ray there was a hip socket right there and brand new heart in the name of Jesus Who's next? I'm sorry, this is the, the order of the service change. Is it okay, brother? I know, I'm a little crazy. Hey, we're a peculiar people, amen. Degeneration? Is that eyes? That's a lie. That's a lie. You can get brand new eyes. It's not impossible. When we live in heaven, heaven's got everything we need. woman. Get brand new eyes in the name of Jesus. That's a lie they told her. See, clear as crystal. had a, a stomach problem and this, this, her stomach wasn't right. She couldn't uh, she couldn't eat right. Which makes me think of it. He said it. She was on about eight bottles of pills. And I knew her parents and she was really a kind of afraid to come to the meeting. She slipped it. Pre precious Baptist girl. But I mean God loves all of us. Amen. She slipped in there and uh, in the meeting, and I, I was just preaching, and all of a sudden, that you can shift, Amen. you can shift gears, you can shift into another dimension. Sometimes you don't even mean to do it. You know what I'm saying? And I laid hands on; she was completely healed. And you're gonna be healed. No more pain, Amen. Raise your hands. 
restored whatever's happened and I know it's going to happen I know it I'm going to speak it into existence Amen. and no more problems in that area this will be a night to remember Each 
touch me? Can you, can you touch? Can you sing that one? I won't sing like you do, brother. <laughs> can you sing he touch me? fixing to ride a horse like Mordecai rode through the street of the city. The Lord said to tell you that there's an elevation coming and I don't I, I believe it can be in the natural but I believe it's going to be in the realm of ministry and spirit said God is going to open a door before your face that will be like when the king put Mordecai on his own horse and rode him through the gate and through the street of that city. You are getting ready to ride as conqueror you are getting right as an overcomer. There's an overcomer's anointing on your head. And the Lord said that you will no longer have to walk up and down inquiring. But I will give you a surety and I will set you on some firm footing. And the Lord said there is a great lifting up coming unto you my brother. And God is going to show you a new way. And you are going to ride high and you are going to ride long. And the Lord said do not forget that he even got to wear the king's robe and the king's apparel. And you are getting some new apparel. God is getting ready to let you ride into something new. Something better. And the Lord keeps saying that word better. It will be better than you ever thought it would be. It will be greater than you ever anticipated it will be. It will be a door effectual that shall open unto thee. And the Lord said that which shall open will be the door that no man can shut. In Jesus' name.
saw a guy in Michigan, a young redhead boy. He had a cast on his leg all the way down. And I just spoke to God's going to heal your leg. I felt it, you know. And uh, he went out in the spirit. And he laid there for three hours. Never moved. And when, you, when we got him up, to go to the car, he was stiff as a board, Mike. We carried him out, looked like his own stretch. He was just stiff as a board. Put him in the car, but when he, when he came to, his leg was completely healed. Sometimes God will knock you right out. First time I was laid in the spirit, I was only 13 years old. And I was just going to look at the lady when she prayed for me, you know. Me and the pastor's son, we were kind of rascals. And she just touched me. Her name was, I don't know if you ever heard of Evangelist Benita Mack. She was in the Assembly God ranks. Somebody said, yeah. Heard of her? Well, she laid everybody out in church. And she just touched me. <laughs> but when I got up, I loved everybody in the place. I never felt love like that. All right. It was running through my body. I felt something running through my body, like an energy. And I just laid there for about 30 minutes. And I didn't I never felt anything like that before. I didn't want to get up. But when I got up, I was 13, I hugged everybody in the church, I told them I loved them. And you know, that's not a 13-year-old. <laughs> you know. from the back of the tent. And she never got to put her hand on me. And I was out in the spirit. And they waited till midnight that night for me to get up. Finally, three men carried me to the car, put me in the back seat, Followed my dad home and then carried me and put me in my bed. And the next morning I woke up. The doctor said this to me, laying on that table. Last week, he said, we will never, never go into your heart again. And they will never, never, never have to go into my heart again. I'm breathing like I haven't breathed in 40 years. I have a breath. My, not only my heart, brother, but my lungs. I have never been able to lay and breathe so easy. You see, when God sets a purpose in you, When God sets a purpose in you, it'll chase you down. You can run as hard and as fast as you want to run. And when you stop, it will be right standing right there. It'll never leave. 
And at 14 years old, this was 46 years ago. God put a purpose. And obedience. He said he was more affectionate to those who walk in obedience. People don't understand that. You want something that transcends your vision that you can have in your mind? God is going to increase your vision 40 times. times whatever vision you have it's 40 times larger you have no idea because your mind can't even fathom that on earth says all that matters is what God says you're not going to struggle you're not going to let anguish you're not going to have to fight for it just as it rolled down the beard on to the cloak. God's going to let it flow freely. Freely. Forty times more than you ever dreamed. More than you ever envisioned. More than your mind has ever been able to come. I haven't been in a service like this in 40 years. I mean, God may have them here every week. Okay? Y'all hear me out of breath? You can ask the people where I, pre where I preach occasionally. They'll hear me wheezing, trying to breathe. Oh. I walked in here with less than 45% lung function. Y'all have no idea. I, I know God's healed me. You know how I know? Because I'm breathing through my nose and not my mouth. You know what I'm 
talking about. You know what it is to strive to breathe. three heart attacks in the last five days and I woke my wife up last night and I said honey I want to say bye to you and she rolled over and she said you will live and you will not die blood is pumping through me like it hasn't pumped through me in years. My fingertips are feeling blood that they haven't felt in years. I can feel my toes I haven't felt in four years. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless it, be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. They got it right. They're not going back into my heart ever again. Five times in two years was enough. And God said tonight, that's enough. And not just for me, but for my wife. The doctor actually told her, you'll wake up one morning and he'll be dead in the bed beside you. How would you like to go to sleep with that every night? I'm telling you, I don't care if I ever go to another church meeting for the rest of my life. I've got everything I need for to carry me all the way to Jesus. Right now. I've got everything I need right now. Last time I was here to Kenny Hill. Remember that? Kenny Hill prayed for me and prophesied over me. Yes. And said, you will live and you will not die. You see, when you're one, when you're one, if I'm healed, if I'm healed, and I'm healed, she's healed. It's been the hardest thing.
coming in the realm of spirit because you'll go through it in the natural. Every single time. You just have to have an eye to see and an ear to hear. say this night that not only have I healed and touched in different spots of this room but even while you have set upon your seats I have caused this river to run and break out into branches all over this house saith the spirit of the Lord and I have encompassed thee and I have flowed round about thee from the foot unto the head and many of you that have dealt with things of longevity things that have been repetitive over and over again you shall find this night has made an eternal cease in your body saith the spirit of the Lord things that you have had to watch for years and years 
years and years, you shall notice a new watching yes. because you shall watch the numbers yes. go down and you shall watch them stabilize uh, and you shall see that you no longer have any disorder or disruption uh, in your body or in your bloodstream. Say it. The Spirit of the Lord know this night that I have healed many areas uh, and I have healed in many things uh, and I have healed in many ways uh, and I have caused healing to wash uh, through you the body tonight. Yea, by the washing of the water of my word have I been cleansing my bride this night of sickness and disease uh, and infirmity saith the Lord and that which you had thought to have been a lifetime shall cease this night and you shall wake up with a new body saith the spirit of the living Amen. God. He's just told you the gospel truth. And Brother Sugar is one of the things the Lord is doing tonight. I felt that all night long. Sugar diabetes Let it go right is, is leaving Leave this diabetes. room right now. Leave Some diabetes. of you are going to be amazed when you yep. start keeping your records of your sugar numbers because every day is going to be stable and normal and better. Thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Thus saith the Lord. I witness it too. Just believe it. Believe it because this whole room is filled with His glory. And I, I felt that to tell everybody, nobody will be the same that's in this building tonight. Every, it's like watching Oprah. Everybody's going to take a book home. But everybody's going to take a healing home tonight that's in this building. This is a vision, a dream God gave me back in 1983. And I, what he just said, whatever you've had wrong with you, look for a change. You're going to wake up changed. Hey, local Hallelujah. We have the keys for each other's locks. Yeah. And then in turn, we have the keys for our own locks because we are each other. Yeah. Um, for pretty much my whole life, I've had uh, the attack of a spirit of fear. And so the Lord's telling me to touch all of those that you see with a, with a major attack of spirit right. of fear and a spirit right. of worry today. sensitive to the spirit realm. I, 
I can feel things. And I was the one in church that didn't feel nothing, you know, right, being raised in assembly. God, I see everybody running around. I said, I guess I'm just not as righteous because I don't feel anything. But when God started it, <laughs> when God starts working on you, you'll change your whole life. Ready or not, here he comes. But you said something. Oh. You said there was healing in here, yeah. And then the Lord said, you going to do what I told you to do. And I didn't mean to cut you off, you know, because, but I had, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> I, I felt this anointing in Kenny Hill's church, my lifelong friend, and I didn't act on it. Rob was up playing, and there were some people there that had been given a death sentence. And I remember I told you, I saw a Nova, and when I see a 76 Nova, it brings me back to the creative miracles that I've seen in my life, because the first creative miracle I saw was something to do with the 76 Nova. I saw an air filter create right out of thin air. Right. And so I saw that on the way to Kenny's that day. But I wasn't scheduled to speak. Lynn Howells was. So I didn't want to, you know, he wanna I thought, well if I what's he think he's doing? He's not scheduled, you know. You know all that stuff goes silly stuff goes to your mind. But when I feel that, I have to move. That's why I got up. And when you feel it, you better move. Because yeah, it'll lift off of you. Yes, Remember when I was going to the prayer for the guy, the lady said in the hospital, he's, they're going to put him on a lung machine. And I said, no, nope. God just told me he's going to give him brand new lungs. Amen. And I felt that mantle come on. I said, get, let's go to the hospital. And Gail said, well, i got to go by BJ's first. I kind of felt a little check on that. And we did. We were at BJ's about 35. I said, we got to get to the hospital All right. before this lifts off of me. And right when I was walking in the hospital parking lot, it lifted off of me. I'm like, dang, oh, God. Oh, oh. And once it lifts off, you just, I know. It, I you're just a normal, normal man now. Just with a sympathy card or something, you know. Right, <laughs> right. That's <laughs> all so you can get. But I still prayed for him. Amen. But nothing happened. Nothing happened. Actually, he went home and uh, didn't get on a, a breathing. But it's about two weeks later, he got brand new lungs. But see, God says, You want to make me wait? I'll wait. I'll let you wait a little while. Don't think I don't have a sense of humor. <laughs> I couldn't believe it when. Bob said that Vanita Mack hit him at 14 and she hit me at 13. How much of a coincidence is that? I wasn't even going to tell that story and I thought, you know, I'm going to tell that story. 13 years old. That's when something hit me in my life. He got hit at 14. Hallelujah. By a woman preacher. Amen, all you women. Sometimes the women are the most powerful ones in the Lord have mercy. If it wasn't for women, none of us would be here. They're the ones that have the door right to the earth. The womb. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God for the women. Yeah, I thank God for Benita Mack. Hit me that night and she hit, she hit you too. I had Benny, he didn't pray for me. You know, he slaves everything. I didn't feel anything. I wanted to. You know, it was back in the early 80s. And I was standing there and another man was he was going, all the preachers were going out, and I'm ready to go out, you know. But I wasn't going to fake it, you know. But I, but sometimes, you know, you're, you're, we're all different orders in God. We're all different orders. In God. We're all different orders. And I guess I should, let's see, Lord, what do you want to do now? What do you want to do, Lord? I heard him say earlier he wasn't done yet, but then you, then Sky did something, Gail said something, and you. So I feel a release. You feel it? Yes, I feel. 
See the lightning outside? Well, okay, Lord, I won't. I was going to preach a little message about lightning, isn't there? Yes. Lord, that more. Absolutely. What did he say? He spoke to us out of Revelation 8 about the lightning coming out of the, the lightning and thunders and the voices filling the earth because much incense was added with the prayers of the saints, and then he put them with fire mingled them with fire and cast them back into the earth and there was voices and lightnings and thunders and that lightning has not quit since we got in here tonight. It has flashed all night long. All night long. <laughs> Praise God. Hallie, all of this is happening because people are seeing in the spirit realm. That's the key to the whole ministry of Jesus. I cannot do anything except what I see my Father do. I cannot say anything except what I hear my Father say. He was not talking about a Father outside of Him. He was talking about that voice, that Spirit of God that was on the inside of Him. Wherever I look, I see in the Spirit. That's what Jesus was saying. And the Lord, uh, Elisha was told by Elijah, if you see me when I'm taken, You'll walk in this anointing. You'll step in to this dimension. Amen. This double round. Double. Seeing and knowing. Seeing and hearing. The bride has the ear to hear what the Spirit has to say. Everybody can't hear what we're hearing tonight. If the right people came in here, they'd probably run out of here as fast as they ran in here because they're not on that frequency. They're not allowed to hear in that realm, that dimension. But God has a people, and Brother Mike and I talked on the phone this Wednesday, and we said that Brother H. Richard Hall used to come to this area and get up and prophesy. He always said that there was a company of people through whom the seven thunders would utter their voices in prophetic release, and that a ministry would rise up in this earth that would operate the very life of Jesus in this earth. The very power, the very name, the very yes, nature did. of God. And when he preached that, they didn't nobody around here know nothing about that. that. He didn't even know the depth of what he was saying. He told us, I don't know what all I'm saying. He said that, but he said, I'll never see it. I'll he never said, walk in it. He, he said, said, but God promised him in the early 80s that everywhere he spoke that word, God would have a group of people in that meeting that would walk out that manifestation. I have held to that all my ministry. I knew that if I was in that room and I could hear in that frequency, then the Lord would let us see in the spirit realm. That's the key to all That's this. The key. That people are seeing in another dimension, in another realm. We don't need to major on minors. We don't need to try to get everybody to digest our, our personal thing. We need a seeing eye into the spirit world. Man has ate the bitter fruit of religion long enough. It is time for the sweetness of the dove, of the anointing of the body of Christ to start operating in this earth right now. Hey, so true. Great men of... be a day, saith the Lord, when I'll interrupt your plans, and I'll interrupt your orders, and I'll interrupt your meetings, and I will come in with a fullness of my glory like you have seen here this night, saith the Lord. Yea, I pulled back the curtain this night, and I've let thee look into the things that I long to do, and yea, saith the Lord, this is the hour when I shall do them above and beyond. I shall do exceeding. I shall do abundantly. I shall do above 
that which you have asked or thought or planned out or hoped for or even thought about, prayed about. Yea, I'm exceeding every expectation and I'm going beyond the mark and beyond the limit. And yea, you shall be thrown upon and thrown right into the midst of a supernatural whirling and moving of my presence and my glory, saith the Lord. And it shall be a whirlwind and it shall produce manifestations of my glory such as I have not seen and ear have not heard, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Just traveling through this whole room, this whole area, is is nothing but frequency, sound waves. You don't know them because you're not tuned into them. You have to harvest them. That's where faith comes in. We reach out of ourselves and believe there's something in another world that God wants to reveal to us and show us. And we still, when we do that, our ear gets tuned in to hear on that frequency and we pull that wave right into the midst of manifestation. Yeah. We start hearing on another level, yeah. seeing on another level. Hallelujah. Maybe we just need to sit down and talk sometimes. Hallelujah. You just back and forth because God is doing a new thing and it's a new sound. But the Bible says it is a certain, certain sound. sound. And if a trumpet gives a certain, certain sound, how shall you prepare for battle? God's raising an army up, folks. Joel 2 says there's a people so mighty and so strong and so valiant in God that they sound like horses when they come in. It's like the four leper smith. They sound like a whole host when they come in because they are surrounded with glorious uh, inhabitants that are not just earth round, heavenward round. There are saints, there are angels, there are innumerable companies of spirit beings that will march into this thing. But I don't believe that can happen unless we create the portal. That's right, amen. Amen. That's right. Yeah, a certain sound can split the veil. Yes. yes. Can split yes. the veil to other dimensions Absolutely. that are all around us. And once you have access to these other dimensions, there are heavenly dimensions. Yes. There's nothing impossible. Nothing impossible. Nothing impossible. Nothing. Nothing. When I saw you singing tonight, the, uh, I... Uh, the Lord told me that you're here to bring joy to the world. Hallelujah. As simple as that yes. sounds. I, I heard that. And I saw you. He said, tell him he's here to bring joy yes, to the yes, joy to the world. Yes, and then yes, you Lord. said something to her about joy. Amen. Amen. And I thought, wow. That's right. Yeah. Glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. As much as you have touched bitterness in your life, as much as you've beheld things that have been unpleasant to you in your pathway, so I, the Lord, shall turn it. So I, the Lord, shall give you a new diet. This diet will consist of things that are sweet. This diet will consist of honey from heaven. For I will cause you to suck out of the rock yes. honey, saith yes. the Lord. Yes. I will cause you to suck from me those things that bring healing, yes. those things that bring health to your soul, those things that bring goodness and peace and longevity, Hallelujah. saith the Lord. Hallelujah. He shall no longer look at a way that says, I'm coming to an end, but you shall begin to see into a way that shall bring longevity. Yes. For I'm going to give you a word, and I'm going to give you words that will come forth from your mouth that will produce longevity. Thank God. It shall produce wholesome words. Oh, you shall God. begin to speak in a way of healing. Hallelujah. Your ways of thought and your ways of communication shall no longer be disease and curse, but it shall be healing <laughs> yes. and prosperity. Yes. Yes. I'm bringing you to a new way in your path. You will begin to see joy, righteousness, and peace Amen. in a way that you have not seen before. Look to me and be whole, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Righteous peace and joy. joy. <laughs>
<laughs> That's um, I, I, I agree with my brother, and I speak. I kept hearing that longevity. Yes. And I, the Lord spoke to me, and I'm going to speak over everybody in here that stuff in your body that's gotten old all right and worn out all right thank you lord i command it to be renewed like it's like yeah. the youth yeah. i command these let the heavens descend into this place i command old organs to be renewed rejuvenated right now by the sound of my voice everybody in here that's got something that's worn out I command brand new things to appear within your body in the name of Jesus. Even things in your house that you think are wore out, I command them to be made new again. I command your car to run like a brand new one again. Damn, my grandma dying. My mom called me and said she's dying. Back in the 80s. And I said, no, she's not dying. Who said that? I said, well, she's in the hospital. Every organ's shutting down. So how many people have you told that to, Mom? Because I've called the whole family, called the Aunt Martha up in North Carolina. I said, I'm going to undo all y'all's words. Amen. And I said, take me to the hospital where she's yes, at. Yes. I'm going to get that death off of her. Yes. God gave us the power to get death yes. off of her. Yes. Yes, he did. And I was so aggravated. Bless their heart. They're on the other side now. But I had two aunts in the room planning their funeral. <laughs> right by her bed. I said, please leave the room now. And they looked at me like, and mom says, uh, do what he says. And I said, Mom, do you want to help me pray for your mom? She goes, yeah. So, okay, you get on that side of that, I'm going to get on this side. But she's coming out of this room. Or I'm not a man of God. She's coming out of this room. And I'm going to speak restoration to every organ in her body. Whatever they said, I'm going to undo it. If they can put words on her, I can put words on her. And so can you. If you only believe, yeah. all things are possible. So I prayed, and I and then I stopped and I thought, this is what made me think of tonight. I thought, she's in her 80s. I said, I'm not only, she's not only, I looked at my mom, I said, she's not only coming off this bed. I don't care if they say she's got two days to live. She's going, when she gets home, She's going to have the energy that she had when she was in her 30s. All right. Sometimes you need to just stretch it out there. Yes, you do. I believe what I was saying. I, I wasn't thinking, I hope so. You know, when you get a certain, uh, when you're walking in a certain, or he'll put you in a certain yes. place, whatever you speak will come to pass. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Whatever you speak will come to pass. Yes. I've seen it happen so many times. Amen. Well, she. We went home. I said, we can go home now. We went home. They called my mom two hours later and said, your mother, we're calling her the miracle lady. Everything in her body's working fine. You can come get her. You can take her home. She goes, well, y'all just said she's dying in two days. Not anymore. She's fine. We don't, we're don't. we just calling her the miracle lady. So my mom called me. She goes, I'm going to go get mom. She's fine. I said, yeah, we'll go get her. And I walked over. I went over to see my mom the next day. My Aunt Martha was had flown in so she was already there and as soon as I opened the door I heard my aunt Martha say well Becky look at mom she's got the energy that she had when she was in her 30s <laughs> and she didn't know I'd prayed that and spoke it and mom looked at me and she goes <laughs> it works <laughs> oh yeah it works everybody in this room could tell you a story stuff they saw that was impossible to happen impossible to happen Oh, Lord. All I can say is just believe God. Just believe that He's He's with you. He's yes. in you. And don't ever be afraid of anybody. Never. And especially don't fear the enemy Amen. if there is one. Amen. Don't fear anything. Amen. 
He'll take all the... If, if, there, if there are spirits that's trying to bother you, they're afraid of, of, of people that have the goods under the hood. You know that? <laughs> I, 30 years ago, some man, Mike, aren't you afraid of the devil? I said, no, but he's, he's afraid of me. He's afraid of me. I, now, that's what you need to believe about yourself. No, but he's afraid of me. Because once I walk into the room where he's at, he's going to leave. He will leave. But you gotta, you, you gotta get to the place where you know that you know that you know. Absolutely. And in the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. I'm speaking. Your ears will open. Your eyes will open. Yes, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you will be able to hear things you've never before. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah, Father. Lord, I praise you. Glad to see the Cargills came tonight yeah. and brought what a voice. Amen. Good Lord, I wouldn't get up and sing after that. <laughs> My God. Hallelujah. Jeez. Mike sounded pretty good too. I didn't know Mike sang. Yeah. Don't shake your head, Mike. He sounded good. Yeah. And you know this man can sing. Yeah. Lord, and play that. He's got that. It's just got the Leslie speaker. Yeah. I, I thought I could, I could hear it. And that's that revival sound. That can't, and get a get a ham and an organ and with a Leslie speaker. You, you remember Bob? Probably the old revival sound in the tents. Thank you, Lord, tonight for touching me. Thank you, Lord, for touching my beloved brother Bob, giving him new veins and new heart and breathing. Thank you for life. Thank you for Kenny Hill speaking over him. Life. Thank you for his wife saying what she said to him when they gave her the Uber report. Thank you for her faith. It, it takes a body. It's, it just takes the body all working together. Hallelujah. I'm trying to close. I just feel like I need to say this. Mike is my husband. And he is weird. <laughs> he, he is really weird. I, I'm bringing people home all the time, and the cat needs to be prayed for, and I tell him the neighbor needs to be prayed for. Can you go to Dennis's house? Because I know that the doctor's giving him those drugs, and he, they need prayer, Mike. Can you go pray for him? And he says, no. I can only do what I've seen my father do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father. It's really true. Amen. And when I see him pray, it happens. Amen. Glory. My husband, I promise you he's weird. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't like him when I met him. <laughs> <laughs> but he prayed a prayer one night after we'd been dating for a while. We were sitting by the fireplace, and he prayed a prayer. And he would said a scripture to me, and I just read the Bible in a year, and I said, I don't remember that scripture. And he looked at me, and as he began to explain it, he could see I was just not getting it. And he just grabbed my hand, and he said, a prayer. And he said, just rest in God, and he'll show you. Hallelujah. And he didn't show me for a while. But what I'm telling you tonight is you can trust Him. Yes. He gets up in the middle of the night. He's real careful sometimes not to wake me, but I know when He gets up. He goes out in the middle of lightning. I tell Him, you don't go in the middle of lightning. And He said, that's when the energy is there. Yes. He goes in the lightning and He prays. Hallelujah. If I ever had faith in anybody, I have faith in my husband. Praise the Lord. And I love this man. Amen. And God sent himself in this man. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you go home with your miracle tonight, don't you doubt for a second. Yes. Amen. Because God is God. He's faithful yes. to us. Yes. Don't talk yourself out of it. Amen. Yes. You've been healed. The Amen. river was here tonight. Yes, it was. Yes, yes. I love you so much. Thank you for letting us come to this beautiful, beautiful church. Yes. I, I, 
when I walk in here, I've already told y'all, it was like when I was growing up, that nothing, the spirit is so different, and it's different because it's different in me. Hallelujah. But thank you so much. I love your family. I love that drummer over there. Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. I was watching that drummer. I saw Bob watching. Amazing. Playing on drum. God. I believe he's got a word in him, too. Amen. Well, wife, thank you. I'm really not that great, trust me. <laughs> but I'll have to pay her something for that later. <laughs> a new dress or something. <laughs> oh, boy. Everybody love the Lord? Love him. Yes. Love him. I think the rain stopped. Yes. I think the lightning stopped. Yeah. Because it feels like it stopped in here. <laughs> <laughs> I got a couple messages on lightning. I, do you remember the 1991 where I came and the guy that plays the piano, he died? The, uh, yeah. You remember we'd be preaching in lightning, lightning that mess? Yeah. Or we had church that night. <laughs> We had a pretty full house. Man, that was fun. I've had some fun times in God. Shoot. I'll start thinking back. All the stuff that I saw I didn't deserve to see. All right. You know. He's, he's, oh, God's awesome. Amen. And He does love you more than you can Yes, He does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Brother Cargill, you got a word, brother. You, you go ahead. Right before uh, Brother Frank gave that word, I heard reverse the reproach. Amen. Reverse the reproach. Hallelujah. I don't know what that means for somebody here. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 My God. You know, anything that's, that's operating contrary to the word, that's reproach. That and the, and when I was praying this morning, brother, in the before coming over here to start church, the Lord kept praying through my spirit that scripture in the book of Joel that said, "My people shall never be ashamed. My people shall never be ashamed. I, we're not going to talk miracles and not have them. We're not going to talk about prosperity and have to deal with poverty. We're not going to do none of that. If we speak it, it's going to manifest. Raise your hands and claim that word. There's a reverse." of the reproach. Hallelujah. Amen. Everything that's mocked me, laughed at me, is going to have to obey me now and bow before me. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. Amen. Lord told me to do this about six times tonight. And you said reverse the reproach. Hallelujah. Now what I want to say and do isn't for everybody in here. But it's for those of you who want to walk in obedience. This is what I take twice a day. That's what the doctor said I had to take. Twice a day. Wow. That's a reproach. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not telling you to go home and don't take your medicine. But that's a reproach. That shows that I quit trusting God. I take eight injections a day and 37 pills. And they said, you've got to do that for the rest of your life. Brother Mike, that's a reproach. That's the lack of faith. Now, I'm not putting condemnation on anybody in here that takes blood pressure pills, that takes diabetes pills, 
And what I'm not putting that up. That's not it. What it is is showing you. It can't be different. Amen. Wow. service like this for have you she goes no I have and so I just started praying and I saw her face I said you felt it didn't you I said ain't no break in the morning I grabbed that sling and ripped it off her arm and I spun her arm around like that hey when I know I know Hallelujah. I spun it around I said you ain't got no pain anymore do you she goes nope through that sling she went back got an x-ray no break Hallelujah. don't think God can't Pass the doctor's test. Amen. He can do it. Yes. I can Amen. tell you stories all night. <laughs> but Amen. everybody in here has got one. Hallelujah. You're, a good brother. You're a good brother. You're very anointed of God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Do you know nearly every service that I preach here, I look out at people and this congregation that were laying on respirators and ventilators and they're sitting and Gail's sitting in here tonight and when the Lord you know what you said about what I see my father do was sister Gail was on a, a respirator and, and they made she before she went under that she told her family don't let nobody in this room that's going to speak death I only want life speakers in this room and when the moment hit, God said, go, glory. Amen. And he did it. Amen. And I went. And the Spirit of God come on me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet when I crossed in the room of that ICU unit. And I prophesied from the door to the bed, life. It was just, I couldn't hold it back. It was just coming. And do you know, I could have went home and I told my wife, I said, I'd put on the front page of the paper today, Gail's coming off that thing and live and not die. She's healed by the power of God. And the Lord, I left the room come home, but the healing, the healing anointing stood by the bed. And her husband, Brother E.L., said for three days, you could stand at the foot of that bed and feel the healing angel of God in that room and so when she walks in the door I think miracles because in there and she's not the only one there's several more that I preached to in here that was already just according to their books that was it and they were there with tubes and machines and everything else but they come in here every week and worship God and shout and praise God because we just believe that it's the hour, the day for these things to happen. It, you can't say it's morning. You can't say it's night. But there's light in the evening time. There's a day right now such as has never been. 
before. Hallelujah. Would you stand and give God the glory for what He's done in this house tonight? Father, we praise You. Magnify Your name. You've displayed. You've distributed. We've seen the diversity of gifts. We've seen the administration of the gifts. We thank You tonight for the spirit of a body anointing that has been in this house. Glory to God. We decree every person here will never be the same again. That all of you will begin to hear and see in that higher frequency, that higher level of the spirit realm. As Paul said, it is expedient for you that you come to visions and revelations of the Lord in His Word. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. God bless every one of you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for yielding to the Spirit and flowing right with a man and woman of God tonight and of course all the other men and women that obeyed God. Thank you for being in tune with the Holy Spirit for hearing His voice. Amen. That's right. Glenda Thomas pray that God, in fact, Lord, just let that river that's floating here flow in that room, in that body, in that stomach, through her whole digestive system right now. Amen. And Lord, flow through Johnny McGee right now, God, with life and life more abundantly. Let death get out of him. Let anything that's trying to stop him from living just be broken out and the thoughts and the patterns be stopped right now in Jesus' name. Minister abundant life to every fiber of His being in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God bless you. Wednesday night, 7.30. We'll be back together again to get into the Word. We love you in the name of Jesus. Amen.